For the past 10 years on A Minute with Stan Hooper, I've been telling real stories about real people. But I no longer tell them from a fake set in midtown Manhattan. Now I do it from a real place, my new hometown. There are enough real people in Waterford Falls to hopefully keep me going for another 10. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, hey, give us two coffees to go. Two coffees it is. So, what brings the Hoopers out so early? Well, we're going to go on a nature walk. Good for you. What's that? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's when you go on a walk and appreciate nature. Oh, oh, kind of like what we here in Waterford Falls like to call a walk. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Hey, you know what might make your walk way more fun? Lou's divining rod. Divining rod? Oh, yeah, honey. A divining rod is a crooked branch used to find water. Do those really work? No, they're a big waste of time. <laughs> I found coins, I found jewelry, relics of ancient civilizations, but never once have I found water. Well, geez, I'd do anything to see a real old-fashioned divining rod. Oh, well, just go over to our house and take it. It's leaning against the fireplace. Oh, are you kidding? Now, thanks. Can I have your keys? Oh, thanks, Dan. You don't need a key. We never lock our door. Never? Why would we? I don't know, to avoid getting robbed. Robbed? You're kidding, right, Stan? I haven't been a theft in Waterford Falls since, well, since Pete stole my heart. <laughs> Nobody here locks their doors. <laughs> what about at night? Nope. You don't lock your doors at night. How do you sleep? Like a baby. Wow. <laughs> Honey, we're living in a town where folks sleep with their doors unlocked. How's that sound? Terrifying. <laughs> Honey, you'll love it. Oh. City gal. <laughs> big city, big brown. Big city, slow down. Stan Hooper. Moving to a small, small town. I just wanted to tell you there's no reason to be terrified. What are you talking about? You know what? The door is unlocked. We're perfectly safe. I know. It's very freeing. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Freeing. Yeah. Yeah, it's freeing. It's almost too freeing. I, I feel like one of those prisoners that, that got out and they don't know what to do with their freedom. I, I, it's too freeing. Where are you going? I'm just going to go down uh, to, to my intruder-free kitchen and, and get a cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> Here, I was getting a glass of water. Oh, right, right. What are you doing? Huh? Me? I was, uh, I was just uh, checking my divining rod. <laughs> I was wanting to see if these things worked. Oh, there they hit us. <laughs> you were locking the door. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, quite oh, yeah. on the contrary. I was, I was actually checking to make sure the door was unlocked. I, I was worried that somebody maybe carelessly left it locked. <laughs> It's unlocked. Excellent. Ah, well, we can all go to bed now. Goodbye. Enjoy your water. I'll just uh, go around and make sure all the other doors are unlocked. You can never be too unsafe. <laughs> oh, hey, Ryan, Chelsea. Oh, hey, Mr. Hooper. What are you kids up to? Looking at some brochures. We're going to Rhinelander to check out some colleges for Chelsea. I don't want to get my hopes up too high, but my dream is to get into the Rhinelander School of Electrolysis. <laughs> well, it's pretty much the Harvard of hair removal schools. Chelsea, you are gonna get in. I know it. You're oh, great. You're so sweet. But let's just be realistic. At that level, it's really pretty much all about who you know. <laughs> Mr. Hooper, say something to her. Oh, well, Chelsea, don't worry. Uh, hey, I didn't expect to get into my first choice either, but I did. Yale. <laughs> Yale is pretty much the Harvard of colleges that uh, aren't Harvard. <laughs> hey, uh, Pete, give me, a, give me a piece of apple pie and a cup of coffee, huh? You got it. Hi, son. 
His girlfriend? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm taking Chelsea after Ryan Landry. Well, I guess this is goodbye then. Just for the day, Dad. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> so, how'd you sleep last night? Oh, like a baby. Oh, oh. I love sleeping with the doors unlocked. I find it, uh, freeing. Hey, Hooper, I heard you couldn't make it through the night with your door unlocked. Where'd you hear something like that? Come on, Hooper, I'd be betraying Gary's confidence if I answered that question. Is that true? <laughs> well, uh... Oh, what's the difference? If you want to sleep with your door locked, so what? That's right. Doesn't make you a coward or anything. And even if it did, you know what they say, there's no shame in being a coward. I'm not a coward. Nobody said you were. Fearful, maybe. Or phobic. I'm not a big word guy. How about paranoid? That's it. Paranoid. I'm not paranoid. You know, that sounded a little paranoid. Look, there's nothing crazy about locking your doors at night. There are a lot of dangerous people. And are these dangerous people around us now, Stan? Look, all I'm saying is security is a legitimate concern, all right? That's why you guys lock the diner at night. We don't lock the diner at night. <laughs> what? No, never have. What if somebody got hungry in the middle of the night? I mean, you guys are kidding me, right? Oh, no, that way someone could come in, enjoy a snack, and they leave the money right on the counter. Now, if they need change, the register's always open. But sometimes it sticks and you have to pound it on the top. Oh, guys, guys, this is crazy. You're just setting yourself up here. A stranger could come in here and rob you blind. Well, that could be true, Stan, except for one thing. What's that? A stranger's just a friend you haven't met yet. Now, that's a nice saying, Lou, and I've used it on my minute, actually, many times to great effect. But... But the truth is that there are bad people everywhere. Don't agitate him, fellas. <laughs> if he says there are bad people everywhere, there are bad people everywhere. Nothing paranoid about that. <laughs> Molly, wake up. The doors are locked, Stan. Uh, I'm not worried about us. I'm, I'm worried about Pete and Lou. What are you talking about? Pete and Lou leave their diner unlocked at night. You know, they're too trusting for their own good. And, and I'm just worried that if they don't wake up soon, then, then they're going to get burned. They're going to get burned. Oh, where are you going? Well, where do you think I'm going? I'm going to rob the diner. <laughs> Good morning, fellas. Morning. What's up? Oh, someone came in last night and helped themselves to a piece of pie. We're just trying to figure out where they left the money. Well, uh, did you look in the cash register? Oh, good thinking, Stan. Nope, nothing in here. This is empty. Wait a minute, Lou. Did you empty the cash register last night? No, not me. Well, well, well. What do you suppose this means? I think it's pretty obvious. Some guy came in here in the middle of the night and borrowed all our money. Ex what? <laughs> you know, I bet Lou's right, because that explains the pie. See, whoever it was took the pie, put the money in the register. Then whoever borrowed the money from the register borrowed the pie money, too. That's it. <laughs> See, there's always a logical explanation. <laughs> It's not logical at all. You think somebody borrowed the money? Yeah, probably some poor soul hit a string of bad luck. I hope there was enough money in there for him. <laughs> we have got to start leaving more money in the register at night. What are you, crazy? Nobody borrowed the money. They stole it. That would be true except for one thing, Stan. What? We don't have crime in Waterford Falls. You do have crime in Waterford Falls. You had crime right here last night. Somebody came in and took all your money. Why would you think that, Stan? I don't think it. I know it. You know it? How? How? <laughs> how? All right, I'll tell you how. I stole it. That's, that's, it, it took a while, but you really got us. I'm not joking. I robbed you. Oh, oh come on, Jeff. Why, why would you take our money? You got plenty of your own. Well, I, uh, 
Uh, I took it not because I needed it, but because it was there. It was free. I just took it. <laughs> that is stealing. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell you. Well, if you're so smart, tell us this. Who took the pie? <laughs> He does like pie. <laughs> but you're going to give it back. Well, of course I'm going to... No, I'm not going to give it back. I'm not going to give it back. I'm going to go spend it frivolously on things. That's what I'm going to do with it. Well, gee, Stan, if what you're saying is true, then you've committed a crime. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. It was a crime. This is ridiculous. You can't hang people in a net. We're sorry, Stan, but a crime's a crime. We had to report it. From Article 1 of the Waterford Falls Penal Code, <laughs> I read under thievery. Until the construction of a town jail, which is not anticipated until early 1903, <laughs> stop laws shall be placed in a hanging net at the scene of the crime for a fortnight with time off for having faithfully served in the Spanish-American War. I don't suppose you served... No, I never served in the Spanish-American War. Come on, guys. I was going to give you the money back. That's not what you said earlier. According to Pete and Lou, you said, I stole the money. I didn't steal it because I needed it. I stole it because it was there. Because it was free, I just took it. Of course I was. No, I'm not going to give it back. I'm going to use it to buy something frivolous. It was a crime. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, I know that's what I said, but uh, I was just trying to make a point. So you're saying you were lying? Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Liars and cheats shall have their heads shaved and be strapped naked to the church tower. I wasn't lying. I wasn't lying. So, so how long do I have to stay up here for? A fortnight. Well, how long's that? Gee, I don't know, Lou. Uh huh. Anybody know how long a fortnight is? Oh, I do. I do. It's uh, 20 minutes. Oh. Wait a minute. It says right here 14 days. You lied. Call the barber and the pastor. Tell them they got business. Oh, hey, oh, uh, Mr. Victor, that wasn't a lie. That was an honest mistake. Oh, really? An honest mistake? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are you all right? Do I look all right? Don't snap at me. I'm your only friend on the outside. Uh, officer, there's been a huge misunderstanding. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Hooper, but the testimony against your husband was overwhelming. Who would testify against Stan? Stan. <laughs> May I call you Stan? Yes. And I quote, I stole the money. I didn't steal it because I needed it. I stole it because it was there. Yes, thank you. We know. Because it was free. I just took it. Of course I was. Thank you. All right, I see what happened. Um, officer, my husband likes to make points, but he's harmless. To put him in a net in public is humiliating. I believe that's what the founding fathers of Waterford Falls had in mind, Mrs. Hooper. Uh, yeah, I understand. Don't you think he's learned his lesson? I'm sure he has, and I certainly don't want to see anyone more humiliated than necessary. Hey, here are the kids! <laughs> this way, children, come gather around Mr. Hooper. What are you doing? This is all part of the Scared Straight program in the elementary school. <laughs> what? This is what happens when you break the law, kids. Take a long, hard look. He is not some vicious thug. No one said he was, ma'am. Don't get too close, kids! <laughs> He stole, Charlie, and stealing is wrong. Sure, it's fun. It could be a lot of fun. It's actually quite a rush. But look what it leads to. A life ruined. My life's not ruined, kids. Kids, this is all a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? I stole the money! I didn't steal it because I don't bring that anymore! Very well. Thank you, Mrs. Turner, for bringing the kids down. We'll see you tomorrow with the first graders. <laughs> no! No, don't bring the first... Ah. <laughs> hey. Hey. You 
sleeping? Huh? Hi, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, I was sleeping. Hey, I slept with the door unlocked. That's great. That's terrific. Uh, get your things together. I'm getting you out of here. Oh, uh, yeah? I've been freed. I've been freed. No, Mrs. H is worried about your back. So, at the risk of breaking the law myself, I'm taking you home to sleep in your own bed tonight. I'll sneak you back here before dawn. Ha, uh, thanks, Gary. That's great. Don't be alarmed, Stan. It's just me and Lou. We got hungry for a little pie. Oh, hey, Gary. What are you doing here? <laughs> I was freeing Stan. I was freeing Stan. That's the best you could come up with. I was freeing Stan. Well, I couldn't lie. Hanging in the net's one thing. I'm not, I'm not about to do time naked on the church tower. <laughs> oh, just shut up. You know what? I need you to switch sides with me. Switch sides? What are you, crazy? Yeah, I want to switch sides, yeah. No, I'm not going to switch sides. It's ridiculous. Well, why? Why would I switch sides? Because I'm uncomfortable, and maybe you're a nice man who wants to help me. Maybe. I'm not a nice man that doesn't want to help you. <laughs> Fine. Hey, what do you got there? A candy bar, chewy nougat, roasted peanuts, on a bed of delicious caramel, under a blanket of silky chocolate. You wouldn't like it. All right, let, let's switch sides. Oh, oh, you'll switch sides for the candy bar? Yeah. All right. Okay, well, let's All just right. do it on, on three. I'll say one, okay. two, three, switch sides. And we'll switch, okay. One, two, three, switch sides. Okay, come on. All right, uh, uh, you're on my foot. Oh, yeah. No, that way. Uh, no, we got it. That's it. it. We're all right. We're all right. Turn. Good. No, we're good. Good. Up. No. No. Oh, this worked out well. Now, give me the candy bar. You didn't switch. Well, it was my intention to switch. Yeah, well, it was my intention to give you the candy bar. <laughs> give me the candy bar. Hey, don't shout orders at me. I may be your butler on the outside, but in here, you're just another number to me, pal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Give me that candy bar. No, get out. Go. Me? Yeah, you. If it wasn't for you shooting your mouth out to Fred about me not being able to sleep with an unlocked door, we wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. You got no one to blame but yourself. You go on and on about loving this town, and you always try to change it. You love us so much, leave us the heck alone. Yeah? Well, I never said I loved you. Yeah, well, after a fortnight together, you may be singing a different tune. Wake up, Hooper. Daylight's burning. <laughs> well, hey, everybody. Stands up. Good morning, Stan. Hey, where's Gary? I'm over here. And yeah, they let me out this morning for good behavior. What did you do that was so good? Nothing. I just generally have good behavior, which they recognized. <laughs> morning, Hooper. Well, I guess I owe you an apology. Looks like they were out to get you. Yeah, very funny, Fred. Well, let me tell you something. You wouldn't last one day in here. No, no, I wouldn't. But I won't ever need to. Isn't that right, Officer Dector? That's right, Uncle Fred. Hey, honey, how you doing? How do you think I'm doing? I'm in a net. Why are you so grouchy? I'm in a net. What's bugging him? I don't know. I'm in a net. Here, honey, I brought you a pad and paper in case you wanted to start working on your minute. Oh, my God, my minute. I completely forgot. Listen, Officer Dector, you let Gary out, you gotta show me some mercy, too. In three days, I have to go on national television and do my minutes. And America counts on me, they love me. You, you can't let me disappoint them. We're not barbarians here, and although your behavior wasn't nearly as good as Prisoner 0002's, <laughs> I would like to see you preserve what little dignity you have left. So yes, I'll let you do your precious minute. Huh. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Where's the net? Where's the net? In five, four, three, two. Hi there. You got a minute? One of the things I love about small towns is that 
things never seem to change. They're pretty much the same as they were a hundred years ago. Even the laws don't change. Did you know that in Trogdon, Illinois, if you've got a cow with a bell larger than a Bible, it's considered blasphemy. And you have to pay five cents to the local church. In Flowery Branch, Georgia, where a stranger is just a friend you haven't met yet. <laughs> You can't holler snake within the city limits. Do so, and you'll you'll find yourself brushing the mayor's horse. <laughs> Are these laws quaint? Absolutely. Are they comforting reminders of a bygone era? Why, you betcha. Are they highly effective deterrents to small town crime? Well, this American says yes. <laughs> I'll be off next week, but I'll be back in a fortnight. This is Stan Hooper saying, make every minute count.